Hi guys, welcome to this beautiful morning. My name is Pavel and I'm here today to give you some basic knowledge about how to fish with a Carolina rig when searching for a perch on a springtime. By the end of this session you will get some basic knowledge about how to set up the rig itself, how to fish with the Carolina rig technique, how to select the rod and the reel for this specific method and hopefully how to catch a fish with that one but we will see no one knows what will happen so not taking too much of your time let's get it started so it seems like the spring is finally knocking to the doors and honestly when i think about the springtime i think about the perch fishing and when i do think about the perch fishing i think about the carolina rig and the reason for it is very very simple this is a nice slow and gentle presentation of your lure very close to the bottom which is perfect as the fish are not so active like we would expect as you can see the weather seems nice the water temperature is still quite low which will make fish quite lazy so they will just stuck on the bottom wait for something to pops in just jump into their mouth and carolina rig is the best technique that you can use to trick that lazy fish but what the carolina rig is about i think you asked this question at the moment so i suggest let's have a sit just for a moment so i can explain you how to set up the rig itself and what kind of tackle you need to create a good rig for perch fishing and just in a minute we'll be back again fishing for nice spring perch okay guys let's quickly go through some elements and basic tackle that you need to tie up a good carolina rig the first thing is the small stopper you put it on the main line in the most simple way of tying up the carolina rig the second thing is the bullet and the bullet is a small weight that can be a lead can be a metal or can be a tungsten i prefer the tungsten ones because they have a good ratio when you compare the weight to the size the best ones from those three the third thing that you need is the bead and the bead itself can be quite different one for example it can be a plastic one it can be a metal one or it can be a glass one which I also have right here but it's very very tiny so depending on which you choose you select how noisy you want to be on the bottom when presenting your lure the next thing you need is a swirl and you use it to connect your main line your braid with the mono leader I prefer to use the small ones in size number 8 or 10 and this ones I can recommend for a perch. The next thing is the leader itself and honestly the best option that you can do is to choose the fluorocarbon. In a case of the mono it's not so resistant so it will not give you protection when you fish in uh, some branches, in some trees, uh, when there's something stuck on the bottom, some rocks, it will not give you this protection as fluorocarbon will do and honestly i prefer to use the diameters up to 0.3 millimeters the thicker fluorocarbon you will choose the faster your lure will sink and you want to avoid it so select the thinner ones um, up to 0.3 in some cases if the fish are very lazy it's good to go for even 0.18 millimeters just to get this lure suspended above the bottom as long as possible so last but not least the offset hooks which are very important when it goes to the carolina rig you don't use the standard ones the hook is hidden in the lure which gives you a good presentation of the lure itself the wobble action of the lure sometimes and also it gives you a better hookup because the fish don't feel the hook until you strike so it can swallow it a little bit deeper it gives the fish time to really get the lure properly and the last element which is of course the lure itself at the springtime i prefer to use the kind of like imitation of the crayfish 
most likely the creature some worms sometimes. So I'm going for the um, imitation of the food that the perch can get by itself in the specific moment of the season. They are not hunting so much, they are more likely uh, preying somewhere around the bottom so they will eat what's going on on the bottom. And this kind of worms or crayfish are the most efficient. Okay, so now you know what kind of tackle you need to make a rig. Let's have a look on the rig itself, how it looks like. So as you can see, the first element on the main line is the small stopper, the rubber one. You can also go for the plastic ones, but honestly, the rubber ones gives additional amortization for the bullet. Then the bullet itself, and as you can see, there is a small bead which will work together with the bullet to make this characteristic clicking noise. Then you have the spiral, then it goes directly to the leader, ended up with the offset hook and the lure itself. Let's just go back for a moment to the stopper and you probably might wonder, okay, what's the distance between the stopper and the swirl? So the distance that the bullet and the bead can move on. And honestly, it depends on how the fish are feeding. If they are feeding, for example, very, very cautious, then it's good to have this distance between 20, 25 centimeters. If they are more aggressive, you can easily make this um, distance shorter, for example, 10 or 15 centimeters. This distance is to give the fish a chance to take the lure without any resistance. So it will not feel the tension of the line, it can freely just swallow the lure and it gives you the best hookup. Now you know how to get a nice Carolina rig setup. And this is the basic to start with this nice technique. Let's now talk about how to present your lure. Because honestly, this is the most, most important thing on Carolina rig. Let's make a cast. After the cast, I watch the braid. If it's straight, if there's a tension, it means that the bullet still goes to the bottom. No tension, there is some loose on the braid, means that it hits the bottom, yeah? I'm doing it in slow motion, believe me. What you do is you get a tension on the line to really feel what's going on and to see the tip of your rod, of your rod. and then you just make a small tracks, like this one. Again, watching the braid, if, it's, uh, if there is a tension, it means that the bullet is sinking. If there is no tension, it means that it's already on the bottom. So again, you do the short jig combined with retrieving, just like one turn of the handle, small and quite gently jig, and again, and again, and again, you repeat this until you get a bite. Or if you don't get a bite after several casts, I suggest you can try to do it more aggressive. And in a more aggressive, you just make it like this. So you make a small short jigs, just like this, always waiting so the bullet hit the bottom. And again, and you repeat until you get a bite. Um, so basically those are two most popular techniques. The first one is good, especially for the springtime when the fish are not so active. So we do it a little bit slower, a little bit more gentle. The second one, more aggressive, it's very good when the fish are feeding. So you know that the fish is active. And as you can see, there is a lot of wheat on the bottom which is quite good because in the springtime the fish are searching for this kind of weed because it's time for spawning. I think this is a good spot. Maybe we'll get some bite. Let's see some more casts and wait for a perch to come. Okay, so we have the first fish and it took on a slow retrieve, on the slow, slow moves that I showed you. So just slowly jigging on the bottom and it was also a gentle bite it's not a hard strike i literally just saw 
that the tip is bending. And this sometimes happens, so you always need to watch your tip because otherwise you might miss the bite. It's not like in classic jigging that you always feel the strike in your hand. It's sometimes, it is a very gentle bite, so it's very good to have a sensitive rod that will show you that something is going on on the other side of the line. Okay, one fish landed, uh, one fish fell off the hook. It was a nice spot. Well, unfortunately, this sometimes happens. Sometimes the fish are not hooked good because the hook is hidden in the lure itself. Well, this is what fishing is about, right? I think it's a good moment to go to the part in which I'll tell you about the rod for Carolina rig, which has to be a specific one. And let's go through some details so you get the basic knowledge when you do your selection in the shop. Okay, so the rod for Carolina rig. In my opinion, there are three elements that are a key to select a good one. And the first of them is the action of the rod. The action, the best that you can get, is the fast one. And it's because with the fast rod, you get a nice long casting, accurate one, and you get a nice lure presentation on the bottom, which gives you a better control of your lure, of the set itself, gives you nice hookups. However, the second thing, and it's not so easy because then you might think, okay, any fast action will be fine. The action has also be progressive. It has to be a progressive rod because this progressiveness will give you a nice hookups and it will give you a control on a fish when you are fighting with it and honestly this progressive action is also very important because if you want to get a fish very gently with a gentle presentation of the lure if the rod will be too stiff you will just rip the hook off from the fish mouth and with the progressive action it's easy to avoid this one so the second thing is the length of the rod itself and in my opinion the best option that you can get is to get a rod between 2.2 up to 2.4 meters. Of course, you can go for a shorter one. For example, if you are fishing from the boat only, or you are fishing from the water, like with the wading shoes. But if you want to get a versatile rod, 2.2 up to 2.4 meters will be the best option. And the last thing, which is the casting weight. Well, the casting weight of the rod especially when you are fishing for a perch in the early spring, it can be just up to 15 grams. This is good enough to get a nice lure presentation for small and medium sized lures. If you are fishing in a winter time on some very deep parts of the water, then you can go for a, um, a little bit more strong rod, like up to 20 grams. But honestly, up to 15 grams, it covers most of the needs when you are on the bank fishing for a perch at the springtime, but also on the summertime or autumn. So you are probably wondering what kind of rod I'm using it today. And today I'm using the Shimano one. It's a Yasei AX rod and it's a dedicated for the Carolina rig rod. The name of the model is Carolina and Texas rig. It's a spinning version, of course, as you can see. And uh, this rod fulfills any requirements that I told you about. So it's 2.3 meters. It's four up to 14 grams. It's a fast action combined with the progressive action of the blank. And it's a solid tip, which is also quite important, especially if you want to detect any bites. Because like I said, not always you feel it in your hand. Sometimes you just see it on your rod. And with the solid tip, it gets much more easier. And the reel that I'm using at the moment is the Miravel reel. It's also from Shimano. It's size C3000, but you can easily also go for 2500 size for this specific rod or for any rod, honestly, for the Carolina rig, if you select something different. Okay, guys, for me, the day is over. And honestly, I'm happy with the result. I get one fish, one bite, which is quite nice as for the early spring. So the fish are not so active, but they will become more and more active every day. So maybe I'll come back here tomorrow and try to get a next one. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get some basic knowledge. Like I said, it was a basic. So don't forget, there is many of the secrets that you can discover on the Carolina technique if you really get into it 
with next months or hopefully years getting familiar with this technique. So thank you for your attention. See you in the next videos and tight lines.